simply to show you that one sheep is important to the, to the real shepherd. The real shepherd, the shepherd. One sheep got 99. Man, what you worrying about one sheep for? You got 99. You ain't going to miss it. Yes, I'm going to miss it because that's my sheep. And I don't care if I got 99. I, I miss that one. I'm going after him. See, that's all designed to let you see how much the shepherd's supposed to care about you. Listen, he said, neither have you sought that which was lost. You, you see, some of them, they, they wander too far away and get lost. And they're just open to the to all kinds of animals because they can't fight. That's another problem. They, it ain't no problem. It's a, it's a blessing because they learn how to depend on the mighty shepherd. But they can't fight. They ain't got nothing to fight with. They just stand there and the, and the bear and the, and the wolf come and just take a bite out of them. Just, just take a big bite out of their side. And just go to eating. <laughs> and there the sheep just standing there. He can't do nothing. But one thing they can do, there's one thing that the sheep can do. And that is when a, when a wolf comes in they miss and uh, starts eating and going on, they'll close ranks on him. They'll start pulling together. And he's right in the middle, enjoying eating a piece of the of the sheep, and they just and that wool will 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 suffocate him. All that wool on them lambs, they get right up close to each other, and he's right in the middle, and all that wool is all up his nose and everything, and he can't breathe. That's the only thing that the that 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 that, that the sheep has is when they are together, when they get together, they have an unusual ability. Uh, to be able to resist the enemy that comes from the way God has constituted them, the way he's made them, constituted them. That's the only thing they have. Uh, but the rest of the time, it is the shepherd that does the fighting for them. You saw that in David. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this, but and they uh, they were scattered because there was no shepherd. See, shepherd's supposed to be there, but he ain't there. Where's the shepherd? First thing you ask, when sheep start scattering, where, where's the shepherd at? He's being paid to take care of these sheep. Where's he at? He's somewhere drinking lemonade in the in the cap. He done slipped off from the sheep and went somewhere else. And here and here now uh, they're in jeopardy. And some sheep, uh, some sheep are so wander have such a wander luster. They always want to wander. They they they'll backslide in a minute. They'll go back to where the sheep shepherd brought them. Ain't no taking you to this valley and up to that mountain. That's what David said. He leads me to the valley and shout. You gotta go that way. That you ain't gonna get nothing to eat. He's carrying you from one pasture to another one. And uh, and some sheep, they're gonna go back to the city. Y'all done ate this stuff back there. And so here is where you're going. Looking ahead. And 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 so uh, as a consequence one of the things the shepherd has to do when he's got a sheep that will not obey, he's got a sheep that won't stay with the flock, always looking over the fence, uh, he'll take the sheep and break his leg. He'll break his leg. And then he'll put him up on his shoulders because he can't walk now. So he put him up on his, he can't go wandering now because he got a broke leg. But the shepherd puts him up on his shoulders and carries him. And at night time, he, uh, when the other sheep are around sleeping, he brings that little sheep up close to him. And he takes care of him personally. And that sheep, you know what that sheep does? That sheep falls in love with that shepherd. So that shepherd spends day and night uh, nourishing this, this crippled sheep. And when he gets himself back together, he ain't he, he going to stick around that shepherd from now on. Because he knows that shepherd loves him. So don't be wondering too much. You might get a broken leg. Stay close. You might get a broke leg. Some of y'all, it's too late now. Y'all already done got a broke leg. So it's too late to tell y'all that. But here, listen. He says there, and they, and they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And they, they became meat for all. See, that's what I said. Meat for everything because they can't fight. Standing out there, just standing, looking silly. Something say, come on, let's go get a steak. 
And he, can you imagine how terrifying that is? He looks up and see a bunch of wolves coming at him, and ain't no shepherd to fight them off. They say they, they're meat for, for, for all the beasts. Of, everything can whoop a lamb. Everything can whoop a sheep. <laughs> when thou wast scattered, my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Boy, that's us. Nobody didn't care. Oh, nobody care about you like the shepherd do. That's why you ought to hang with the shepherd. I don't care how somebody, what little nice something somebody do for you. They ain't going to do for you like the ship shepherd will do. Now you getting to hanging around them, sniffing around them all day. Uh-huh, that's going to come a time you find out, boy, they'll let you down. They'll fail you sometime. You, you get wrapped up in these people in this world, even other saints. They ain't not, they human. They can't do everything for you. You need to stick close to the shepherd. I always said there that, that nobody cared really, cared for their soul. Therefore, your shepherds, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, said the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd Neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O oh, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I'm against you. Things are going, I listened to a song this morning. Things are going to turn around. It ain't going to always be this way child of God. It ain't going to always be like this. God's going to turn it around for you. So here, he said things are going to turn around because I'm against you, you shepherds. And I will require my flock at your hand and cause them to cease from feet. I ain't going to let you be no shepherd no more. You, you, you are no count shepherd. Here, neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore for I will deliver, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come down from up here in heaven and I'm going to feed my flock. I'm going to take over. I don't, I don't need no more of you shepherds. Listen, from the mouths of them that, may, that they may not be meat for them. For thus said the Lord, behold, I, even I will both search. I'm going to seek my sheep. Now, when's he going to do that? When Jesus came? He saw the people as sheep without a shepherd. And he came and ministered because that's what he was. He was that invisible shepherd of the Old Testament that has suddenly become visible in the New Testament. And he says, I'm coming to, sheep, to, uh, to minister to my sheep. That church leaders and nation, national leaders, this group. So I, I'm sick of them. I'm coming and seek my sheep. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he's among the sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered uh, in, the, in the cloudy and dark day. You ever seen a cloudy day? Sheep see cloudy days every day because they, they got cataracts. When you got cataracts, the day is cloudy. You can't make out faces. Yeah, as a wolf, and you think it's a you think it's a pig. Because it's a cloudy day. Dark day. Cloudy day. So sheep, every day is cloudy. That's why they, they need to know that they need their shepherd. He has to be their eyes. He's your eyes. You using your eyes and getting in trouble. You using your eyes and you ain't seeing things right. You ain't seeing things the way you ought to see them. Because you got spiritual cataracts and glaucoma. So, listen to what he said. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them uh, to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. Now, I will feed them in a good pasture. See, it's all about feeding. Every, every verse talking about feeding, feeding, feeding. They need strength to live. 
They need strength to follow. They can't follow the shepherd weak. So the shepherd is always, his whole intent is always looking for where's the next place I can find a nice place where they can eat. Where there's a green pasture somewhere where they can eat. Got to go across this next mountain, but I got to pass through this valley. And the valley is called the valley in shadow of death. You got to go that way, saint. Sometimes it looks like you ain't going to make it, but you're on your way to the next feeding ground. And you got to go through the valley. And shadow, the shadow of death is where the wolves and the bears are growling at you. They ain't doing nothing but growling because the shepherd is there. He says, you know, you growl, but you better not come down and touch one of these sheep. Yeah. Somehow or another, they, them animals got no sense to sit just growling, standing to the side. I wish I could get me one of them. <laughs> you ain't going to get none of them as long as the shepherd is with them. They're coming out of that valley. Some of y'all been through the valley and shadow of death. All of it was to get you to the next place where you can feed and become strong in the Lord and in the power of your God's might. So there, he said there, I'm going to feed them in a good pasture and upon a high mountain. See, you got to go through the valley to get to the mountain where the feeding is. New pastures. Shall they fold, shall the fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, says the Lord God. I'm going to make them lie down. They're nervous. Sheep are nervous. They're always moving, fidgety. They're nervous. And it's, it's, it's the shepherd got to find a place where he can let, make, them, make them lie down. He said, I'm going to cause you to lay down. Y'all so nervous. Always nervous, sitting up in church, all nervous and worrying about this and nervous about that. I'm going to make you rest. I might have to lay you down for a week on your sick bed to make you lay there and rest. Just lay there and rest. Huh? He had to make us do that because we don't rest. We just always worrying about something, worrying about things. So let me hurry up quick with that. He said, I will seek that which was lost. And bring again that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken. I'm going to do everything that the shepherds were supposed to do. I'm going to do it. And he did it when he came in the person of Jesus. Strengthen that which is sick, but I'm going to destroy the fat and strong and will feed them with judgment. Now, you can read the rest of that chapter on your own, but that, that, that's what he's the, the good shepherd. Now, I told you about him back there. In, in Ezekiel, the good shepherd. Who, who are you talking about? The one, the one the preacher got up and talked to you about last year in Ezekiel. That's who I'm talking about. That's the good shepherd. So now when you look at this lesson uh, today that we're looking at, one of the outstanding things or the most outstanding thing in my mind in this lesson, I won't try to get you because y'all, y'all smart. I ain't got to tell you every word in the lesson. He need to tell us. And all you need to learn something on your own. You, you need to show that you value the word and you want to know it for yourself sometime. You know, we, I, you know, I can't define every word, but there are, there are a few things in the lesson that I want you to focus your attention on sometime uh, in the future. And that is some of the words that, that are outstanding in this, in this lesson. Uh, and one of the words that is, that is outstanding uh, in this lesson is uh, the name that uh, that he receives in the lesson as, as being, as we already said, as being the good shepherd uh, of the flock of God and uh, what his response, what his responsibility is in this lesson as the good shepherd. So he'll tell you the good shepherd, the, 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 the thing that is emphasized mostly about him is he did two things, and that's important. That's, just, that's very significant. Uh, uh, as you look at this lesson, it'll help you to understand uh, something, some of the things in this lesson when it says there, the good shepherd, and he says it four times. So anytime Jesus says something four times, I mean, he's trying to drill that into us. He's he just saying it over and over again. And what he says is the good shepherd laid his life down. Um, three times he said the good shepherd laid his life down. 
That means that the good shepherd gave himself as a sacrifice for us. He laid it down. You remember when scripture tells us to, to lay our bodies on the altar? He laid his life down for us. He gave up his life. He never in, he didn't live number 33 years. I understand if he, he went and got to be 80, his life's about over anyway. So uh, I'm willing, I'm going to lay my life down for y'all now that I'm 80. No, he laid his life down when, you, when he was 33 years old. About the time he get ready to start living, he's going to die. And it's because he's laying his life down for us. See, he, he's doing all that kind of stuff to make us love him. Because we have a lot of problems loving Jesus. Seems like we got a struggle trying to love Jesus. The greatest person. Ain't no way in the world we ought to miss loving him after all he does for us. The next time, one time, three times he said that. The good shepherd laid his life down for the sheep. One time in this lesson, he says the good shepherd gave up, gave his life. For the sheep. Give us. G-I-V-E-T-H. One time he says that. In the lesson. Now just them two words. Are very significant. Laid and give us. He laid it down. On the altar. Of Calvary. But he gave it. Every day. He give us. That means he keeps on. Now he didn't keep on dying. So you know it don't mean that. Well, what does that mean? He give up. It means all his life was about you. He forsook his whole, he spent all, he was, he was totally obsessed about us. That all he talked about, all he did was about us. Well, where's your life? When you going to get a life, Jesus? When you going, what you doing? You going to get married? You going to have some kids? No, because I'm all wrapped up in y'all. He gave, kept on giving. Every day he was giving his life. Instead of him having a life, he was giving it for us, giving it for us, giving it for us. And all the time, it was designed to encourage us to love him. We don't know what to love. Uh, so we love a bunch of no good men, love a bunch of no good women. Sometimes somebody had to tell, man, you need to leave that person alone. They ain't no good for you. You, you need to leave that man alone. He ain't for real. He ain't good for you. We don't know nothing about what to choose. We don't know what to choose. We, we, need, we need a shepherd to help us even choose who to marry. What to eat. Them sheep be out there eating anything. Poison. We spending all our time eating pork. And here we come to church with head spinning. Y'all pray for me. I'm dizzy. You dizzy? You had ate three pork chops before you left. Uh, be tempered in all things. Ain't nothing wrong with now. Don't misunderstand. I ain't saying there's something wrong with eating pork. I like pork. Ain't nothing wrong with eating meat. But it's be supposed to be tempered in all things. There's too many pork chops you done ate this week. One every day. That's too many. Okay. The greatest thing in this lesson. That, that I think, personally, this is me, so you don't have to really pay no attention to me. You know, he ain't nobody, but so, but this is to me. You might, somebody in here might see it the same way. So that's why I'm going to tell it to you. The greatest thing, I think, in this lesson and in your life and in your relationship with Jesus Christ is the voice. They only mentioned it two times in this lesson. But I think it is the greatest, it is the most important thing in the life of a child of God is the voice. The voice. Hearing his voice. Because most of us have at some time or another, and some of us even now, are in a bad way because we don't know his voice. The sheep couldn't make it if they didn't know the shepherd's voice. The sheep could not keep from being deceived by false shepherds if they did not know their shepherd's voice. That's the whole thing about sheep and shepherds, the voice. The voice. 
And sadly enough, sadly enough, we don't value the voice. That's why we're always in trouble. That's why we are all, our pastor preached a few weeks ago, tremendous lesson. He was teaching us on, on how to hear the voice of the Lord. I concur with him 100%. And I could and 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 I could sit up, stand up here, and I know if I asked y'all, some of y'all would ask me, how do you know when you're hearing his voice? Well, let me tell you something. His voice is so multifaceted that there ain't no one way to hear his voice. He speaks in a whole lot of different ways. But you know how the sheep know his voice? They stay close to him. They stay so close until they're familiar with his voice. The problem that we got, I hate to tell you this, we ain't close to him. We don't live close to him to, to familiarize ourselves with his voice. See, because he might speak to you. He might speak to, listen, he spoke to Moses through Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, and he wasn't even saved. And Jethro told him, Moses, you taking up to you wearing yourself out trying to solve the problem of a million people. You need to get some people to help you, Moses. Now then go ask God if I ain't telling you what's right. Go talk to your God and ask him. And God told Moses, you do what Jethro said. He ain't saved, but he got some sense. God might speak to you through somebody that ain't saved, but you ain't listening because you don't believe God talk through no unsaved people. I ain't paying no attention to them. And sometimes what they telling you is what God is saying. Talk to, talk to Balaam through an ass. And, and Balaam got mad at the ass and went to kicking him. Man, what you kicking me for? I'm, just, I'm trying to help you. Kicking the ass, the dumb ass. See, God speaks, uh, and that's why I can't tell you no one way God going to speak to you. You got to be close enough to God until you can detect when God is speaking to you. That's God talking. Have you ever had somebody say something? That's God talking to me right there. I don't know. It's something in you that you just know when God is speaking. When you are close to him, you just know that's his voice. Now that sometimes he'll speak through a, a small, still voice. Sometimes he'll just whisper. And, and you have to always stay quiet on the inside so you can hear the whisper. And that's, what, that's God helping you to keep your mouth shut and learn to be quiet. Because when you go, when you, when you, you know what? Now, I'm going to leave that alone because I, I can just go on with that. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you this right here. You have to stay so tuned with God that you expect God to speak to you anywhere. You always, when I listen to folk talking, I'm like, is God saying something to me? When I, when, I, when I come to church, is God saying something? Is that saint what they said? Is that, is that God saying something to me? And usually, usually, you know what God is speaking to you because it's something that you're concerned about. Usually. It's something I'm bothered about. And that's how one way you will know that was God speaking to me because that very thing right there had been on my mind. And I've been trying to figure out what to do about this. Huh? And he'll have somebody come with your answer. And you just know that that was God. God speaks to you in all cases. He speaks to you through your circumstances. Sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes you have so much trouble in your life. God said, I'm trying to talk to you. But you never say, God, are you speaking to me? And so you just go on in your trouble thinking he, that's just the way people, no, no. He's a child of God. He's talking to you. He's telling you, you need to change. That's why this happened to you. You need to wake up, open your eyes and change. But you ain't going to listen. He ain't, he ain't talking to me. <laughs> yes, he is. See, you, uh, God speaks to us in a whole lot of different ways, saints. But we got to always be listening. Keep a listening ear. Everywhere you go, everybody you talk to, uh, uh, I'm going to be sure I don't miss the voice of God. I don't care if it's a drunk out there. I'm listening to you. Cause God, God, yeah, see, because God's training you to be perceptive. That's how he's a lot teaching us to become perceptive and, and able to discern things. That's how he's teaching his sheep to hear his voice. Whole, all the stuff God's doing 
Uh, it, it's all about helping me to come to know him. See, he says, now, if you want to hear my voice, learn to get close to me. And you get close to me, you'll become so familiar with me until whatever way I speak, you'll know it's me. And, all, and you know why he's doing that? To pull us close. You got to get close to me. You want to know how to know when it's me? Get close to me. See, he's always trying to draw us close. He's the shepherd trying to draw the sheep close to him. And so in this lesson, you have the good shepherd. You have him as the good shepherd that lays his life down for the sheep. And then you have him there also as the, as the great shepherd in, 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 in uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 13. He's the great shepherd. The, chief, the good shepherd lays his life down. But the great shepherd gets up so he can keep on guiding us. So when you look at Hebrews 13 and 13, he calls him the, uh, the, great, the great shepherd of the sheep because he's risen from the dead. If he didn't rise from the dead, who's going to lead you then? So he rose again as the great shepherd in order to keep on leading us and to keep on guiding us. And then in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 3, he's called the chief shepherd. Not only is he the good shepherd that died for us, not only is he the, the great shepherd that keeps on leading us, but he's the chief shepherd that's coming to get us. So as a chief shepherd, he's coming to get us and reward us for being faithful to his voice. So you see, you get all that in there, and that just helps you. It helps you to understand, you know, uh, uh, the reasoning. Now, uh, in my concluding of this lesson, um, you have to go back to, again, <laughs> you have to go back to chapter 9. Because chapter 9 shows us a transition, the transition from the flock where these, these no good shepherds are to the flock where the good shepherd is, Jesus Christ. See, he, he comes to take all of those that have been waiting for him, according to Scripture. Now he's, a, he's arrived, and now he goes into that, sh into that, into that flock and into that, uh, that, uh, being, uh, that, uh, uh, enclosed area where they bring the sheep and uh, where the where these false prophets and 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 and, and scribes and 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 uh, scribes and and the uh, Pharisees all of these people were supposed to be leading God's sheep and they were doing these things as we read uh, mistreating them well we got one that they mistreated and you saw it because he want he wants us to see and understand what the chief, what the great sh and, and a good shepherd is supposed to do. So what they did was in chapter 9, they kicked that man out of the church. Th that was the place where uh, they were kept in reserve until Christ came. But see how they treat this man was simply telling them that the man that healed my eyes uh, uh, he his name was Jesus. They told me his name was Jesus, and and that's all I know. And and I don't understand why y'all don't know who he is. And he's telling them people truth. You know they got mad and kicked the man out of church. But you know what Jesus said? Uh, he caught him. They throwed him. Bible said they cast him out, throwed him out. But when they throwed him out, Jesus was on the outside waiting, and he caught him. And he said, "Now I'm gonna put you in my fold." Wherever well, that fold right there, I'm through with them. Through with them shaped shepherds, I'm through with them. Uh, I'm going to bring my fold in. And this man was one of the first men that Jesus put into uh, his sheep fold. See? And so uh, in this lesson, you have a transition. Chapter 9 uh, was where they were, the people were in this Judaistic fold where God said that he allowed them to remain uh, until, uh, until the time for Jesus to come. You see that in, in, uh, in Galatians, the New Testament, chapter 3 and chapter 5. You see him talking about how Israel was kept uh, under the law and, and reserved in this fold right here. But when Jesus comes, and we read that in Ezekiel, he says, I'm going to come and get my sheep out of that fold. That's being mistreated and misused. And, and so I'm coming to get them out and I'm going to put them in my fold. I'm going to feed them. And that's where you are today. You in that fold. 
You in that fold where Jesus treats you good, treats you wonderful, meets all your needs. Uh, that's the fold he has brought you into. We didn't come out of Judaism, but we came out of a lot of traditional belief when our parents and, and, and things that we followed and, and, and things we was enslaved to and bound to. And he brought you out into this fold. And he brought you out and told you, you need to love me. And you need to get close to me. And you'll be amazed how I can lead you when you learn to seek and know my voice. Like a man walking right there told you about that voice, how to know him. And you'll find that we won't have as much trouble as we have. We won't find ourselves always messing up because we don't know the voice. I'm surprised a lot of people there. You'd be amazed when I had a class. People just didn't know his voice. And I'm not saying I'm, they didn't know how to stay to. All you got to do is stay too close to him and then keep your ears open for him to speak to you anywhere, through anybody. And you will discover that you will learn to know that's the voice of God. That's the voice of God. And you'll find yourself going right. You'll be going right because you know his voice. And so there he says that here, um, he, he uh, tells us in this lesson, he says that he is the good shepherd of the sheep. And he lays down his life for the sheep because he loves the sheep. He loves y'all. He loves us. I don't know why in the world he loved me. Because I, I, I ain't, listen. I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I don't know nothing, I don't know how to lead my own self, just go down the line and I, don't, I ain't no asset to him. I am not an asset to the mighty God. He do not need me. But for some reason, he, he loves me. He loves you. I, you know, you need to ask yourself, why in the world does he love me? I ain't no asset. But see, we think we such a much. That's why we, he ought to love me. Because I'm educated. He ought to love me because I'm this and that. No, you ain't nothing. So here, uh, 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 that, that's what I taught them Wednesday. I told all of them they weak as water. I said, y'all weak as water. All of y'all. There's one back there, Sister Burris. I think she was in there. I said, all y'all, preachers and everybody, y'all are weak as water. And you know why? Because if you don't recognize how weak you are, you will never see how much you need the strength from God. You, you will never see how desperate you are for God if you don't know how no count, no good, weak person that you are. You will never look and say, Lord, I need your divine strength. I need you to lead me, guide me, because I'm a weak as water. It's a blessing to be weak. Paul said, when I'm weak, good God, y'all, when I'm weak, then am I strong in the Lord. Put your weakness down and let God be your strength. And you'll find out that life will get better for us. Life will become better for us. As one of them sisters was in there Wednesday, one of them preachers was in there Wednesday. When you in there Wednesday? Was that just right there? When you in that preacher right there? Was you in that Wednesday Bible class? I might, I might see it. I told you I'm blind. I, she looked like that preacher that was in there Wednesday. But we had a, but, but, but it's, it's it, everything is designed for us to have to look to Him. That's why, that's why. Don't, don't look down on yourself because you got handicaps. Your handicaps, listen, if some of us didn't have these handicaps, you wouldn't be walking with God. If you didn't have some of these handicaps, you wouldn't always be found praying, talking to God, if you didn't have no handicaps. Handicaps help us. Handicaps help Paul. He said that, that, that he left a thorn. You got some, all of us mostly got some kind of thorn in our flesh. And you ought to thank God for it. That's what Paul did. He said, I thank God for my thorn in the flesh because when I'm weak in myself, then I'm strong in God. So in my concluding of this lesson today, I just I'm hitting things to help you to uh, make this lesson come alive to you. It'll come alive to you when you look at these various different words and and various different uh, phrases that are applied to the shepherd. You know, and so we, and let me just read a little bit of then said Jesus unto them again. I say unto you, I'm the door. He's saying there, he's saying there ain't no way to get to God 
There's no way to get to this, this pasture. There's no way to get to this relationship, but you got to come by me. That's the first, that's the third time Jesus used uh, this I am uh, uh, phrase uh, to tell us that he is the God that spoke to Moses at the burning bush. Back there, he said, Moses said, what's your name? When the people of God ask me, when I go back to Egypt and tell them that God's going to bring you out, they're going to ask me, what God told you that? And he, he said, tell them that I am, that's what I am. I am what I am, and I will be what I will be. And if I ain't what I want to be to you, I will become what you need me to be. Everything you need, I am, I am. And so Jesus comes up and says, I am the door. He comes up and said, I'm the light. He comes up and says, I'm the bread. He comes up and said, I'm your resurrection. I'm everything that you need. You don't need no whole lot of money. You need to know you got a God that if you die, you're going to live again. Money, good God Almighty, money can't get you up from the grave, but the mighty God can. He said, I am the resurrection, and I'm going to show you because I'm going to lay down in death for three days. And I know Lazarus got up, but I raised him up. huh? But I'm going to lay down, and then I'm going to raise myself up. I'm going to get up by myself because I'm a, I am the resurrection and the life for you. I'm your bread, water, strength, everything you need. That's what I am. Now, if you've got some problem that he ain't, he says, I'm such a God, I can become that. I can become, you need a savior, I will become Jesus. Everything Israel needed, God says, that's what I am. They needed a lot of physical stuff. You need some spiritual stuff. So Jesus says, I'm this, I'm that, everything spiritual, because that's what you need, something spiritual. You don't need to be rich. You need a God that can meet your spiritual needs. So Jesus says, I'm your spiritual bread, I'm your spiritual light, I'm your spiritual resurrection. Seven things that Jesus said, I am your door into the fold, this new fold that I got, that I'm putting this blind man in. I'm emptying that fold over there because my people are still in there following the law. But I'm going to bring them out from that. And I'm going to bring them into this new glorious fold where they can go in and out and find pasture. Uh, you remember the preacher that sung the song from shady green pasture. He, he leads me. 23rd Psalm. In that, that beautiful psalm, you need to read it if you didn't read it, haven't read it, because that psalm shows us every spiritual thing that Jesus said I can do for you. See, she, she, he's so careful about you that he'll tell you you don't even have to ride the airplane because I know you got a problem. Get you a train. Get you a bus. See, because the sheep are scared. They're scared of dying, so they don't want to eat drink from no running brook. Because they're scared that their wool will get wet and they'll drown because they don't know how to swim. So they say, okay, they won't drink. You got a brook that's running, but they won't drink. He said he leads me beside still water. The water that don't scare me. Yeah, I, he don't have to let you ride the airplane. You don't have to be, no, I don't ride no airplane because I'm, I'm thinking about falling out of the sky. Ain't no use you looking at funny. Listen, all of us got some funny ways about us. Everybody's funny in here. You just one, you just one white line out there from being crazy. That line out there in the street, that, that's, how, that's how thin that line is uh, with our brain. Now, you don't believe it. You wake up some days and you don't even know what day it is. Now, if God don't give you mercy, you're still thinking it's Wednesday. You will. I've done it. I woke up and they be looking at me. Well, what? Uh, huh? It's Sunday. I'm uh, sa Saturday. I'm off of my job. I'm up there getting my clothes on to go to work. They looking at me laughing. I said, "What y'all laughing about? Uh, where are you going? I'm going to work. This is Saturday. Oh man! Took them clothes off and got back in that bed. Huh? There. You see? Now if God hadn't have been merciful and woke me up to that. I'd still be getting my clothes on to go to work on Saturday. See, we're just one line from being crazy, y'all. Just one. So don't, don't think too much of yourself. Learn how to depend wholly on Jesus. Hey, I love y'all. I do, I do, I do. I love y'all, but I got to go.